All right, back with another video exposing and refuting the Luciferian Pelagian heretic Jesse Morrell and just this blatant damnable heresies, these rank heresies that he's just saying on a constant basis. I showed in my other video that he actually says that the saint can sin in heaven. You know, and I refuted that showing that, for example, Romans chapter 8 verse 29 to 30 talks about how you're conformed to the image of Christ. And also Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21 talks about how, you know, Jesus Christ changes your vile body. And Jesse Morrell basically denies, denies that when he says that we can sin in heaven. But here's also more clips of him just teaching this, this rank heresy and also this Jesuitical Roman Catholic papist-like doctrine of this continual salvation. It's just refuting, this will be refuting Jesse Morrell's continual false salvation. Because really when you get down to the fact of the matter, these street, these street papists, they're just preaching Roman Catholicism. Their salvation there is not finished at the cross. Their salvation is the continual process of works and you have to die in a sinless state, a state of grace like the Catholics and papists would say. Yeah, it's just Roman Catholicism is what they're preaching. But here's the first clip, which I showed in my other video, by the way, too, where he uh, implies that the saint can sin even when they're in heaven. Watch this. So it's actually Calvinism that teaches sinless perfection because uh, Calvinists teach that when you die, God will give you a glorified body and you cannot sin anymore. Once you get to heaven, sin is impossible. Uh, Calvinism says that you can attain a state of sinless perfection after you die. Uh, that's a denial of free will. The reason God gave us free will in the first place is the reason God doesn't violate our free will in salvation. It's the reason he doesn't violate free will when we get to heaven. Heaven will be full of people who refuse to sin. Heaven will be full of people who choose to love God. And that's what he wanted from the beginning. That's why he lets us go through this life of probation um, so we can form our own character. To, uh, to become saints or to be sinners, to choose our path. And uh, those who choose to be sinners will go to hell, and those who choose to be saints will be fit for heaven, not earn heaven, not merit heaven, but to be fit for the kingdom of God. Yeah, like I said in my other video, that's rank heresy right there. This this false doctrine that saints can sin when they're in heaven. Heaven is a place where you're conformed to the image of Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. Okay? You can't sin when you're in heaven. But here's the next clip where he's teaching this Jesuit doctrine of conditional security, uh, where he says that saved believers can still perish in hell. Watch this. Now, in Calvinism, God is obligated to save everyone that Jesus died for because it would be unjust, they claim, in a penal substitution for God to punish the same sins twice. So actually, James White does not believe God is free in the exercise of his mercy once the atonement has been made. He must, by justice, spare those for whom Jesus died. I believe those Jesus died for can still perish. And uh, that's what the Bible says. Uh, don't cause your brother to stumble for, or to perish for whom Christ died. Or um, the false teachers deny the Lord who bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Or if we sin willfully after we receive a knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin because you're trampling the blood of Christ underfoot. So I believe that those Jesus died for can still perish and therefore their uh, salvation is purely a matter of grace. Now here's where, once again, the Luciferian Pelagian heretic Jesse Morrell is peddling his Luciferian Pelagian heresy. In this, one, in this clip I'm going to show, he is denying that Jesus Christ bore our sins on the cross. Because he, he denies the substitutionary atonement and the imputed righteousness, which goes hand in hand with his Luciferian Pelagian false doctrine. So, watch this. Jonathan Edwards Jr. also taught the governmental view of the atonement, and he was a Calvinist. Uh, but our penalty is hell. Jesus didn't take our literal penalty. And our penalty is eternal, eternal torment in hell. Jesus didn't take that. What he did suffer for our sins is a substitute for our actual penalty. So that now that our actual penalty has a substitute, our actual penalty can be remitted, which is what Jesus said. He shed his blood for the remission of sins. So rather than having a substitute in penalty, which is the penal view, you have a substitute for penalty which is, I think, the more biblical view. Yeah, this is the kind of fruit and, and uh, heretical doctrinal path you go down when you're into Luciferianism, which is just Pelagianism. Pelagianism is Luciferianism, and Luciferianism is Pelag Pelagianism. They're one and the same when it comes down to their theology. Because if you think you're sinlessly perfect, you're, you've fallen for Satan's lie. He taught and in, in, he told to Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, ye shall be as gods. Now, what about the thing of eternal security? Here are just two quick scriptures on the subject, subject of eternal security showing that no, 
uh, you cannot lose your salvation if you are truly born again. It's Jesus Christ who gives you your salvation, and it's Jesus Christ who keeps you saved. If you're having to do things to keep yourself saved, you're, you're still working for your salvation. You have to die in a holy state like the Roman Catholics and Jesuits would say. But here's the first scripture. Uh, the infamous John chapter 10, verse 27 to 29 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Notice the wording, never perish. Okay, And it's Jesus Christ, I give unto them eternal life, and you'll never perish. It's, that, it's just that simple. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40. Another good one on the matter. John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40. This, this one really makes a problem for these Jesuit, Papists, Lu uh, Luciferian, conditional security Satanists. says, John chapter 6, verse 35 to 40, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Notice there, I will lose nothing, no wise cast out, never hunger, never thirst. Yeah, because your salvation is in the hands of God through Jesus Christ, his son. Okay, your salvation is not something where you have to do perpetual works to keep yourself saved. That's paganism. That's Roman Catholicism. That's Islam. That's Hinduism. That's, you know, Judaism. That's not biblical salvation. Next point, here are two scriptures on the, the imputed righteousness and the substitutionary atonement. Some two quick scriptures, you know, just quick uh, proof texts refuting this Luciferian Pelagian false doctrine which denies the substitutionary atonement and imputed righteousness. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21 to 24. This guy needs to be exposed along with this whole street preaching movement this this SOPA group this this little circle of people that they go out they're doing a lot of damage to the body of Christ too they're just they're they're absolutely just insane unbiblical ungodly wicked just insanity it, it's just a bunch of of um I, I'd argue it's some kind of psyop to make Christians look bad. It's, just, it's, it's basically a psyop to basically uh, do harm to the cause of Christ, which I've said in other videos. But First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one to twenty-four: For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in a, ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Uh, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. He bear your sins. But Jesse Merrill in one of those clips denied that. Well, he's denying the word of God. He's denying the all-sufficiency of Christ on the cross. Because really, when you get down to these Roman Catholics, these papists, it was more just an example for them. You know, like they'll take verse 21 out of context and say, oh, it's an example. We have to be imitators of Jesus Christ. Kind of like being another Christ, which is warned about in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 to 5, and Matthew chapter 24, verse 23 and 24. You know, and a lot of the modern versions, by the way, like the ESV, change verses like Ephesians one or five one to say to be basically be imitators of God, which is basically to become another Christ, which is you know Satan's desire in Isaiah chapter fourteen verse twelve to fifteen and Ezekiel chapter twenty eight verse two to eighteen. Also, just quickly forgot to mention this one other verse right here, Second Corinthians chapter five verse eighteen down to verse twenty one. This also makes a, a big, huge problem for Morel's Luciferian Pelagian false doctrine. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eighteen down to verse twenty-one. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Okay, Jesus Christ is. You know, reconciled you. He's your reconciliation. He was made sin for you so that you could be made the righteousness of God in him. 
Okay, not, not by your own self. Uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 talks about that, how, you know, not have my own righteousness, but the righteousness of, of Christ through, you know, God through faith in Christ. Paraphrasing, of course, but also another good scripture on the whole thing of the substitutionary atonement. I mean, Romans chapter 5 verse, I mean, the whole chapter of Romans 5 is a good, good one on that. Uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 3 talks about that as well. Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 to 13. Uh, a bunch of other ones as well. Yeah, so don't believe this Luciferian false doctrine of Jesse Morell. It's funny how he denies that Christ bore our sins on the cross. Meanwhile, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says just that, that that's what Christ did. So don't be deceived by this whole street preaching movement. It is wicked. Uh, this this whole circle of, of SOPA uh, and this annual conference of SOPA, they call it, it's a street preaching conference. That little circle of people, a lot of them are wolves in, in sheep's clothing. They ought to, ought to be marked and avoided. Uh, they're going out and doing damage to the body of Christ and the cause of and the spreading of the gospel through their just Westboro style uh, media grabbing, you know, just wicked nonsense, basically, when you get down to it. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.